into the new space for roughly a month now and it's taken a while to get to this point but it's finally starting to feel like things are more or less back to normal. All my equipment is unpacked and set up and I'm finally ready to start taking on new jobs. Plus I've got some new equipment that I can show you but before we get into that let's take a look around. The layout is essentially the same as I envisioned it in my last video. I didn't really change that much. Starting out over here, this wall behind me is just a big pegboard. So I wanted to hang all my tools and printing essentials and stuff like that just right behind me. So I've got printing tools on the left and just general tools on the right. Also along this wall, I have a nice big workbench. In my last space, I really didn't have that much workbench room. And so I wanted to make sure that I had a nice long workbench. So I have a place to stage all my jobs, stack shirts, that kind of thing. Plus I can do any of my side projects like wood working or crafting here. And then at the end of the workbench down here, I have my heat press as well as my 3D printer. Then over in the middle here is where I have my printing press as well as my flash dryer. I'm still using the Riley Hopkins four color two station press. It's served me well in the past and will continue to do so here. I mean, it's a good size for a space like this. Uh, it's not too big, not too small. It gives me just the right amount of room so I can freely move around it. It's not like my last space where it pretty much took up the entire width of the garage before I had to like duck underneath it or slide by it to get around. I don't have to worry about that here. I have plenty of open space. But if I do feel like upgrading to say a six color four station press at some point, I feel like I still have enough room for that. Then back in this corner, I've got some more screen printing supplies like all of my inks, I've got palette tape, scoop coders, registration tape, just more storage for screen printing stuff. Next to all that on the other wall here is where I have most of my screen making stuff. So coating screens, uh, exposing them or leaving them out to dry, all that's gonna be done behind me right here. And then as you can see here, I have my first new addition to the shop, which is a Basler screen rack. This time I opted to just buy a screen rack rather than building a new uh, drying cabinet. I just got lazy and figured it'd be easier to just buy a screen rack. Now perpendicular to this wall is the conveyor dryer. I wanted to place this in a way so that when I'm pulling a shirt off the pallet, I don't have to go far to put it back down. This way I can just pull it off and put it down in one fluid motion. And so that brings us to our latest addition to the shop, which is this brand new washout booth. As you guys know, I haven't had a washout, like a legit washout booth before. This is the first one. Before I was just using a utility sink that I got from Lowe's, super cheap, not very effective. I couldn't even fit 20 by 24 screens in there. But this is a big step up. This is the screen 33 inch washout booth. Is it screen or S-screen? I don't know. I've been saying screen, screen. Somebody tell me in the comments if I'm uh, saying that wrong. And of all the washout booths within this uh, price range, it seemed like the better deal because it's uh, made of metal, whereas other booths are made from plastic. So it just seems sturdier. And I've already tested this out a few times and so far it's working great. But having this new equipment here does feel like there's another thing unfinished in this shop. When you have a proper washout booth like this, it's all the more necessary to have a proper filtration system to go with it. And to be honest, I've never really had a good way of filtering out all that gunky, emulsion, inky water that comes from screens. You know, I would just have it kind of dump into some buckets and then maybe I would filter it out with an air filter or maybe a screen mesh or something like that. But it, it's never really been effective. But a professional filtration system usually costs like 11 or $1,200 and I don't know, spending that kind of money isn't really in the cards for me right now. So I looked into what a filtration system like that is comprised of and I'm, I'm sure you know where this is going by now. So to build your own filtration system, you're gonna need the following things. A big old bin, two screens that you don't mind parting ways with, an air filter that you can cut down, a sump pump, two water filters, some plastic tubing, 
and some general plumbing things like connectors and plumber's tape. And what's gonna happen is that washout gunk is going to come down from the booth and hit the first three stages of filtration. The first one being the air filter that I cut down. And that fits right inside of a screen, which are the next two stages of filtration. I have a 110 mesh, and then below that is a 230 mesh. I went a step further by adding these brackets, so uh, the screens kind of stayed in place, didn't move around too much. Works pretty good. And those first three stages are going to catch all the big pieces, you know, like, like the real chunky boys. It's gonna catch those. From there, the water will start to pool up inside the bin, and that's where the pump comes in. It'll drive that water up to the next two stages of filtration, which are water filters. The first one containing a 20 micron filter and the second containing a five micron filter. So basically it's a series of finer and finer filters. And then from there, the water will just keep on going down the drain. I've tested this a few times and I'm happy to say that the water does come out clear on the other end, so I must be doing something right. I think it works, but I haven't really tested it long term yet. I'm sure I'll have to revisit this in a few months after I've used it more regularly, but all in all, I see this as a pretty successful DIY project. The best part about it is how much it cost me. Like I said, a professional filtration system costs about $1,200. This one only cost me $150. So if you're on a tight budget, but you still want a filtration system, then I would just build one like this. It's totally doable. It's really not as hard as I thought it would be to put together, and it totally works. Plus, it only took me two trips to Lowe's to get all the parts. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty good for me. That's, that actually might be a record. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the little tour I gave you of my new studio. And if you guys wanna build your own filtration system like this, I highly encourage you to try it out. Or if you don't, just go buy one, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just don't send gunky emulsion water down the drain. That's, that's not good. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. You guys know what to do. Stay humble, stay busy, stay creative, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.